Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, a woman police say is responsible for stabbing her boyfriend is now behind bars. We'll have the latest on the case. A bill aimed at battling Kentucky's heroin epidemic is moving through the legislature. Some nasty fog out and about. It's very patchy, but very dense. We'll go over the latest forecast, what we can expect this afternoon. Coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from the WKYT News Team, and welcome in. It's so good to have you along Wednesday, March 11th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. A foggy scene to start your morning, but I guess it's better than rain. It is, and the temperatures are certainly better than they have been. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris in our first alert weather center. Yeah, it feels good outside. It doesn't look good, and also down toward the southeast, we're still not catching a break from the rain. Let's look at your current visibilities at this moment. Very patchy, dense fog across town. You're going to be running into that as you're traveling this morning. Especially central and northern zones. That's why we're not seeing rain. Where we are is down toward the Howe Rogers Parkway, southeastern Kentucky. It'll take some time before we move this stuff on out. I'd say early afternoon, just after noon time to probably uh, 2 p.m. That's probably your best bet to get this rain on out of here. Look around the region, and there's some fog here and there. Look at Corbin, pretty dark, and also sitting there with Frankfurt. Not as foggy, but you probably go down the road 10 to 15 miles, and that's where you're starting to see some of that fog really settle on in. 59. Nine degrees this afternoon. Rain in the southeast moves on out later on this afternoon. Much of this rain is for the southeast during the morning hours. Once it moves on out, we'll have a dry period. It'll be brief, but it's there, and we need it because more rain is on the way. Heavy rain, too. I'll show you how much you can expect coming up. It we'll see in a bit, and heavy rain sent some creeks and streams rushing over roads in Montgomery County. And now one couple has quite the mess to clean up outside their home. Earl Spencer says he first noticed the problems forming on his blacktop back in January. Recent rain was just too much for his retaining wall. The weight of the rain and snow broke the wall, sending debris into a neighboring yard. I'm surprised the hell as long as it did. We had no clue how the thing was built. Uh, until it came down. We need to just clean, air, clean everything up and get it all nice and tucked back in there, make sure there's not, nothing loose. Spencer expects that it will take several weeks until the retaining wall can be fully repaired. Well, it's something that police say a lot, turn around, don't drown. And here's an example of why you should not try to drive across a flooded out road. The Grant County Sheriff's Office took these pictures of a water rescue yesterday. Police and firefighters had to rescue someone who tried to drive across a road covered in high water. This happened off Turner Road near Williamstown. The person trapped inside was okay. Water problems continue in parts of Estill County this morning. About 500 people still do not have water service. That's down from about 2,000 on Monday. Homes in the Millers Creek, Fitchburg, and Cobb Hill areas may be without water service the longest because of a broken water line. The entire county is still under a boil water advisory. Well, new this morning, Lexington police arrested a woman. They say stabbed her boyfriend after a fight. And police say the man needed dozens of stitches. WKYT's Mark Barber is live from District Court with a look at that case. Mark, good morning. Intriguing. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Latanya Buckner is accused of stabbing her boyfriend three days ago. Police say that they searched for her at several addresses that were connected to her name, but they say they were not able to find her until late last night. Investigators say that they tracked the 25 year old to a home that she shared with her boyfriend. On Fair Oak Drive for four to five months. According to an arrest warrant, that's where Buckner stabbed her boyfriend on Sunday. Court documents state that she took his phone into a bedroom and started looking through it behind a locked door. The arrest warrant goes on to say that when Buckner's boyfriend knocked on the door and tried to take his phone back, she stabbed him multiple times in the stomach, chest, and wrist. Investigators tell us that the man told them he was attacked with a pocket knife with a five inch blade. He was rushed to UK Hospital, where he received 26 stitches for the chest laceration, five stitches for the stab wound on his stomach, and five stitches for the wrist laceration. Now, Buckner is charged with first degree assault. She will be arraigned here in court later today. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Mark. We are tracking the investigation this morning into a fire that damaged a Lexington home. That fire started around 9:30 last night along Transylvania Park near UK's campus. Firefighters say no one was home at the time, no one was injured. They think the fire started in a small bathroom. At this point, they're not exactly sure what caused the fire. 
We're coming up on 505 here on WKYT this morning. A bill aimed at battling the heroin epidemic in Kentucky has now moved forward at the state capitol. That plan is a compromise that the House hopes the Senate will accept. WKYT Sean Moody is at our live desk with a look at the compromise. Sean, good morning. This has been elusive to work out for lawmakers. Yeah, it sure has. Good morning, Bill. The House Judiciary Committee unanimously approved Senate Bill 192 late last night. It was introduced back in February as a bill relating to inmate health care, but since then, it's transformed to include a much larger section about heroin. According to our news partners at the Lexington Herald Leader, the House may vote on the bill today, but the Senate may send that bill back to committee. The bill would allow for health departments to create needle exchanges where drug addicts could swap used needle for new ones. It says those needles would not be considered drug paraphernalia while located within the program. It would also require Medicaid to offer more resources for substance abuse, substance abuse treatment resources and would allow naloxone, the heroin overdose rescue medication, to be prescribed to school employees where they could give the medicine in emergency situations. Now, this is the last day before the veto recess. Lawmakers will be back March 23rd and 24th for the final two days of this year's session. At the live desk, Sean Moody. WKYT. Sean, thank you very much. Eastern Kentucky University is receiving some national recognition this morning. Military Times Magazine has ranked EKU third nationally in its list for best business schools for veterans. EKU was the only Kentucky school in the top 25. The rankings consider overall policies for veterans, among other factors. 506 now on WKYT. Let's get a look at traffic. It is a foggy morning to start out, so you want to be aware of that as you head out. Looking at this location right now of Broadway and High Street looking pretty good. Not too much traffic out there. Still shiny streets. We had to rain until uh, late last night, but uh, most of that has moved on out. We have a little bit of a dry spell here for a day and a half or so before the rains return. You're looking good. No reports of any troubles. Finally, people back in school, back to work, and so forth. So we anticipate a busy rush hour, and we'll keep you informed with that. Officer Don will be in next hour here on WKYT. And it's so good to have you with us on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started on your Wednesday. Step aside, ladies. There's another reboot of the popular 80s film, Ghostbusters, and this time it's all about the boys. We'll have more on who will be working on this flick in just a few minutes. And a Facebook emoticon has been deleted after thousands of people signed a petition to remove it. But we'll more on that coming up in your consumer news. Central northern zones with that dense fog advisory down toward the south and southeast. We're still looking at rain. We'll take a brief break from the rain and then we add more to that flood threat as we get into Friday and off towards your weekend. I'll show you your latest forecasts coming up.